How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 11. Uh, coming off of a pretty disappointing overtime loss. Definitely could have won the game, but starting quarterback out, uh, best wide receiver and return man out. Just didn't pan out for us. I made a couple of mistakes down the stretch. We had that pick six where... Uh, you know, we let Penn State score a touchdown where we had two guys wide open that if the pass would have gotten downfield, probably would have ended up being a touchdown for us. So the cards didn't fall in our favor. And so we are nine and one. Uh, number six in the country, still ranked ahead of Penn State on our first bye week of the season, which is good news for us because if we go to our team management and our injury report, our boys only have one week left on their back spasms. So... There's a chance that they could play next week in the game that we'll play today against Duke. So, uh, who knows? I, I probably would allow Radon to play, but maybe we sit Marquise for another week if they become probable or questionable. Uh, and if we play Radon, maybe we don't play him the whole game. Maybe we start David, and if he's doing a good enough job, we keep him in. As far as the top 25 is concerned, a solid amount of ranked matchups this week. Michigan plays number 13, Penn State. Oklahoma plays number 24, West Virginia. TCU and Kansas play. That's a top uh, 10 matchup between 7 and 5. Another one here in Iowa and Purdue. Arkansas plays Ole Miss. Cal plays uh, Oregon. So a lot going on. Chance for some crazy losses. A chance maybe for us to jump up in the rankings. Um, we'll hope for the best. That's for sure. There is something that I want to take a look at. It's the first week they're available. The awards semifinalists. Uh, I feel like we're probably going to have a bunch of guys up just because defensive numbers are pretty inflated all the time. Radon is in fifth currently for the Maxwell in the Walter Camp. He's down in eighth in the Benrick. We've got Kale Mackey, Manny Stokes, Will Phillips, Logan Smith, Don Riley, and that's it. But a uh, crazy amount of guys there in that top 10. So a good chance to win the Benrick. In the Nagurski, we've got Sidney McRae, who I have completely forgotten. He's a senior this year, so we're going to lose Sidney McRae, one of our first big-time recruits, sitting at 92 overall. Uh, the O'Brien, we don't have anybody. In the Walker, nothing. Just haven't had a good enough uh, season running the football this year to be eligible for that one. Nobody for the Blitnikoff? No, Marquise, of course, for the Blitnikoff. Uh, is injured, is just barely on that list, but you never know. Maybe he could come out and look pretty crazy. I mean, 2,356 all-purpose yards. Only 12 total touchdowns, but uh, he's a junior. Next year, if he stays healthy, he could be pretty, pretty crazy. For the Mackey, nobody. For the Outland, I'm going to guess nobody as well. No, Willie Moyes, the right guard, makes it up there for the Outlands. That's great news for us. Three pancakes and a sack allowed. Pretty impressive. Uh, in the Remington, we've got Robert Gray, our center up there. Only a junior, so he'll return next year. The Lombardi, we've got Sidney McRae and Emmanuel Bush. So pretty happy about that. Oh, and John Taylor. Uh, okay, three guys up for one award is nice. How about the best linebacker? Kale Mackey and Will Phillips. Anybody else? No. No. <laughs> Every time I get to the bottom, they're not outlined in yellow. I don't notice it. Don Riley up there as well. So uh, our middle linebacker and our left and our right. So all of our linebackers. And let's see, junior and two sophomores will have them back all next year, which is great news. Uh, is it? Yeah. The, they'll be all close to 90 overall. Our linebacker core should be scary next year. In the Thorpe, we've got Manny Stokes, Logan Smith, Leon Sandcastle, all eligible for the award right now in the semifinalist list. The Groza and the guy, I don't expect to see anything. We don't kick the ball enough. And the best returner, of course, is going to be Marquise Jackson. Uh, he hasn't had a, uh, a return touchdown since week two. And uh, I mean, he's far and away still the best in the country. So it'll be nice for him to get back from the injury. But uh, I think he pretty much has that award all sealed up. Uh, well, we've got a little bit of recruiting that we need to do this week. I'm not entirely sure where we need to go. I think there's a couple of guys that we can take points away from. Uh, there's a visit that we need to schedule and two guys that we can scout, Peter Watson and Freddie Harper. Uh, Freddie might be coming off the board because we're pretty far behind. 72% locked, but Washington hasn't offered him a scholarship yet, so there's a chance that we could get up there. So we'll spend the 50 points. Why not? Maybe he's incredible. 
77 overall at linebacker. Maybe we just kind of start dumping points and hope for the best there. How about Peter Watson, the 71 overall wide receiver? I think he's just a pretty low lock guy. Um, and he does go down to 69 overall, but not the end of the world. Three scholarships to give out, and we will give all of these out. Um, I'm not necessarily certain we'll get all three of the guys and right now it uses all of our points but i think we're also going to be taking some points away from people in one visit in victor Carr, this running back who we are currently in the lead easily with so we're going to try to get him to commit nice and early which means we're just going to go with the week 11 visit make sure that it locks everybody else out of the race for him and then uh points there's one thing i want to do we're going to go by our percent locked because I think there's a couple guys that are pretty much all ours uh, that we don't need to be giving points to. There was one player specifically. I think it's Ryan Hall. Yeah, Ryan Hall. We are the only team close and he's 97% locked with a visit still. So I'm just going to take his 700 points. Um, and I probably will give them somewhere else. Ryan Carey, 99% locked in a battle with Wake Forest. They still have a visit. It seems like they're going to fight for the running back. So let's give him 450 right now. And that way we can give the remaining 250 to somebody else. Um, and then there's a couple of guys I think that probably come off the board. Ralph Jones. People have offered scholarships. He's had visits. We're going to get locked out there soon. Why waste our time? John Vincent. There's a chance that we could fight for. Um, how good is he? 69 overall. We're not worried about it. So uh, let's just go by biggest lead. And we'll find somebody that's not super locked and we'll give them points so long as they are uh, pretty high overall. Ryan Hall, we just took the points from. Jason Rollins, no. Who is it going to be? Well, we can max out Elvis Payne, give him 50. And then David Jackson will give him the remaining. He's only 71 overall, but if we get him to commit soon, then we can just take those points and give them elsewhere and... Uh, it seems like it's all us, so if we can just prevent App State from jumping back in, they're 1,300 down, I think we should be in a good spot. So we will advance to week 12 now, where we get a home game against Duke, and I think if we don't get commits this week, we will get commits after the Duke game. There's a ton of guys ready to visit for that one, and they're all going to be pretty locked up, I think. So I'm hoping for the best. Maybe we get somebody this week. That would be nice. But we'll just uh, see where it lands. All right. So we were right to pull the 700 points from Ryan Hall because he actually committed before his visit. And we have a 78 overall defensive tackle onto the board. JJ Tyson, the strong safety that we've been pushing hard for. Uh, he's 82 overall. So why wouldn't we? Uh, he is ready to visit. Elvis Payne's ready to visit. Um, John Vincent does commit to Clemson. So again, good that we didn't give him points and Victor Carr visited probably didn't like it as much as he wished he could have, but that's good news for us. We do not move up in the rankings. Duke is four and six, but let's just keep on the recruiting train and then we'll take a look at ESPN and then hop in and hopefully beat Duke. Uh, a lot of guys visiting this week, a lot of guys and a potential to add two more Elvis Payne, JJ Tyson. Will either of them work? Yes. Elvis Payne, there is a competitive visit there, but three complimentary visits for sure means I'm going to send him to our remaining home game and three for JJ Tyson. That's going to help out with the bonus points so, so much. So <laughs> even more guys ready to visit. And we do have some points to give out this week. Um, So I'm going to take a quick look through here and then I'll hop back in with some decisions that we'll make. Well, it actually was pretty easy in the end. There's one thing that we need that we have not really started to fill uh, to, to take care of our positions for next year, and that's the tight end spot. We only have one tight end on our board, and it's George Fitzpatrick. We have offered him a scholarship. The leaders haven't, uh, but we're still quite a ways behind, and we're losing out, so I'm going to give him the remainder and hope that that works. We might have to convert somebody to tight end next year, which would not be optimal, but uh, there just aren't a whole lot of options available to us. So there's, again, our recruiting done for week 12. What happened in the top 25 last week? Any upsets? It looks like Oklahoma was able to win. Texas beats Baylor and plays number five Kansas this week. Michigan was able to beat Penn State, which is 
bad news for us, I think. Maybe good news. I'm not sure. Uh, I think we probably would have rather had Penn State win just because it makes our loss look better. Oklahoma was able to beat West Virginia. Kansas was able to beat T uh, TCU. Purdue beat Iowa. Uh, so TCU dropped at number five, but we got jumped by Kansas. Uh, anything else? Let's see. Iowa lost. Penn State lost, of course. Arkansas loses to Ole Miss. Uh, we had West Virginia, of course, lose. And dropping out of the votes, Illinois, Oregon, Florida. So Oregon lost to Cal. I'm not sure about the other two. Obviously, they probably don't like that. More ranked matchups this week. Arizona, UCLA. And we saw, let's see, Cal, Iowa. That's a really weird late season out of conference. Uh, Georgia, Auburn. And uh, Kansas, Texas. Uh, <laughs> please win, Jayhawks. Please take out the Longhorns. That would be so fantastic. 7-1. and one. They're doing pretty solid this year. No players showing up on the injury report, which means we don't have to worry about Marquise or Radon being probable or questionable. So we don't have to worry about them necessarily re-aggravating an injury. So we should be all good to go in this one. Duke, again, four in six on the season. They're B-plus team, so probably in the low 90s. Um, they put up a decent amount of yards and they throw the ball very well, but... Uh, we're beating them somehow in the turnover differential. Back to just zero on the season for us on that. Who has Duke played this season and where are their wins and losses? Let's see. They lost to Northwestern and Iowa State. Oh my gosh, a 1-7 in seven Iowa State. They beat a pretty bad Army team on the road. They lost to Louisville and Miami and then have beaten Wake Forest and Pitt. Uh, lost to Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech, and then last week beat Virginia. A pretty close game, a couple of scores there, uh, but against the three and six Virginia. So we are definitely the hardest team that they faced this entire season. We need to make sure that we come out and play like that. We're running out of different options for our home uniforms. We've changed it up every home game so far this season, I think. So we're going to continue to that with the uh, white pants and the black jersey and helmet uh what should we put duke in i'm pretty sure they have some very cool stuff i love their different helmets um i kind of want to go with the white devil one though i think that's a very cool design and let's see do we give them black pants maybe um we can't give them any uh different jersey maybe we go with the white pants yeah i like that look quite a bit so We'll go with that for the Blue Devils and 90 overall with a 91 offense and an 88 overall defense. Uh, I mean, it should bode well for us. Let's just hope that we can come out and play well today. Uh, Duke's offense, again, pretty solid so far. They don't run the ball, ball a whole lot. They do pass quite a bit. Uh, fourth in the country there with 297 passing yards against our not great pass defense however their defense seems to be pretty atrocious so they can't seem to stop people from getting points or yards that should be good for us more recruits visiting than i can count we're not going to try to focus on a whole lot of goals maybe if it's super easy we go for the offensive ones the pass for 250 yards and run for 100 but there's no way i can control whether we get swatted passes or interceptions or sacks with linebackers or d tackles so we're not too worried about that. None of our top three players are on hot streaks right now. So we have returns uh, two from injury. Their top players, Venables 96 overall at free safety. Barton 95 at the center. And the quarterback, I think it's Luca Diamant, 93 overall. He did, uh, I think, a decent job last year against us. We're going to try to slow him down. And ooh, that is upsetting for them. A broken vertebrae for Fitzpatrick, the running back for Duke. Has him out for the rest of the season and a partially torn MCL for a middle linebacker and a bruised shoulder for a right tackle. Could see those two players missing this game as well. It's a rainy day here in Conway at Brooks Stadium, which is not something that you would necessarily expect to see. Uh, but, you know, I guess we're getting into the fall pretty late now. Let's just hope it's not too cold for our boys here as Duke will get the toss. They're going to elect to choose tails we somehow win the coin toss so we'll just choose to kick this one off it is a five mile an hour crosswind on the day which means we don't have to worry about kicking into the wind at any point right now they take a touchback and diamant comes out we'll see if what the defense can do 
I am very worried about the performance of our defense on the day. Can they stop the pass against these guys? As they actually hand it off first down, and that's a lot of space available as they get 11 yards immediately to Roger Johnson. I'm just going to hope that this works out, but we're going to be starting to bring some blitzes, I think. Uh, first and 10, the blitz comes. Jenkins can't get the tackle. Sidney McRae is able to save that from being another first down, but still gave up nine yards. That makes two plays, two handoffs to the running back, and 20 yards for this defense as they will throw the quick out route to Damon Triplett for four yards. First attempt is a completion for Luca Diamant. As this is going to be another handoff. I was there with Don Riley and just missed, but there's a fumble, and the quarterbacks picked it up. Diamant streaking towards the end zone. Manny unable to get there in time, and Duke is first onto the board. A broken play turns into a touchdown for the Blue Devils. That is so disappointing. <laughs> uh, that's hard to defend against. You can't really expect uh, the fumble to be picked up and ran into the end zone by the quarterback is Marquis Jackson. First play back from injury. Decent little return there. We're going to test uh, the secondary capabilities of Duke right now. First and 10, stepping back to pass. First play back for Radon. Maybe a risky throw. He has Marquise Jackson downfield. Marquise gets a little block and gets us almost to the 40-yard line in just one play. Our two injured players not missing a beat on their return into the game. As this one's a handoff to CJ Beasley. That's a good eight-yard pickup, and we might be able to answer real quick here. Looking on the play action for this one. Some pressure coming. I'm going to try to roll outside the pocket right on has some guys open. X and Y were both there, but again, trying to make that throw on the run, not something I, you know, really trust him to do. Instead, I'm just going to elect a scramble, get the first down, get us inside the red zone just about, and we'll hand this one off on first down. CJ kind of got stuck on the line, still able to get two yards out of the play. Those DBs playing quite a ways off Marquis. And Tyson makes me think they're going to be open. We're going to throw it up for Tyson and Mobley diving into the end zone. I didn't think he was going to get there, but he does. Extends fully to get six there. Right on two a two through the air to open this one up. Uh, good timing route. Maybe a little bit behind his man, but the coverage was nowhere near. And then the extension to find the end zone is so fantastic. Couple of uh, early scores for each of these offenses. The question is going to be at this point, which defense will step up first as Duke takes another touchback to open up their drive. The Blue Devils showed that they're willing to do a lot to run the ball in this game. It worked out pretty well. The first drive would at this time. They're going with the screen. Don Riley misses, but forces the running back to cut it inside. So we only give up two yards. I would have preferred to give up uh, a few fewer yards than that, but it's not the end of the world. Second and eight, will they go to the air? They motion the tight end out. This looks like a handoff, and we're there with Kale Mackey. Kind of got hit by the block, but we're able to just keep the momentum going, and he gets the tackle for a loss of a yard. And I'm going to try to trust in the coverage of this team. Third and nine, look into the air. As they do find a man, the blocking. Oh my gosh, almost perfect. We don't give up the first down though, and I expect them to punt this one away. Just relied on the coverage well enough. Thank goodness we dropped him for a loss of a yard on the play before. Sets us up beautifully there. And now a returnable punt for Marquise Jackson. What can he do with it? Getting some blocking. Can he get to the corner? One man misses. Blocks all over the place. And Marquise Jackson, his first game back from injury, takes his first punt return to the house since week two. 76 yards and the special teams finally gets on the board again. And it's going to be 14 to 7 in our favor. The blocking on that punt return was absolutely beautiful. Uh, I mean, really only had to make one guy miss, and then everything else was taken care of for us. I'm going to stick in the 3-3-5 for a little bit, I think, at the start of this drive, as they're going to come out and look like, yeah, they're going to run the ball. The running has been so effective so far for Duke. I think we're really going to have to sell it to stop it. Just a little bit worried because I know that their passing game has been strong this season and I don't want to get burned by it. Another handoff and Nicky Daum Daumelin. Interesting last name. He gets six yards there. 
Going to try to bring the pressure on second and four. What can we do with the safety blitz? These plays often do work pretty well for us. Second and four, man in motion. And, well, that's going to help us just as much as the blitz. A false start from the offense. Backs them up five yards. Second and nine. What can they do? Another handoff up the middle. Kale Mackey's there, though, as he tried to bounce it to the outside. So we only give up a yard, and it's another third and long for this Duke offense. Go back to this 3-3-5 cover two and see if it can work twice in a row for us. As, yeah, as expected, they're going to step back to pass. And, oh, right over my head. Not enough acceleration to get to that one in time. And they pick up the first down. That's just a situation right there where uh, running the 3-3-5 doesn't give us enough pressure on the quarterback. So he just has time to find a man. Good blitz that time from the defense. Drops him for a loss of one on that first down. What can we do here? Cover two. Look, expecting the pass on second 11 as we're nearing the end of the first quarter. They're going to step back to pass man wide open. Leon, uh, he just turned around. I, I don't understand what happened there. Uh, but we gave up the first down easily. Well, as it often seems to be the case with our defense uh, and the opponents that we play their quarterback perfect through the air so far four of four but the safety blitz gets in there and to end the first quarter we come away with a nice sack for a loss of seven in the lead 14 to seven uh duke's doing a nice job diving down the field but i feel like we are pretty much in control right now we'll just have to see i guess what we can do in this second quarter we get the ball to start the third which is great news is we did a great job sealing off the edge and not allowing the quarterback to pitch that one out on the option. That's going to bring up a third and 21 for the defense. We could hold them to maybe a long field goal. Uh, or maybe they have to punt it away. They're going with the slip screen. Can Kale get there in time? He slows him down. And then Roger Johnson does finally get wrapped up and brought down for a loss of four. Fourth and 24. Maybe enough to kick them out of field goal range. They're going to attempt it, however. It's a pretty long effort. So we're going to send Marquise back to return and give him some blockers as well. And it's not going to be fielded. Wow. He had the distance for it, but he pushes it left. Oh, defense comes away with another stop there. Uh, the way that they're lined up over Marquise here makes me think that he could be pretty successful getting away on this one. We're going to send him on the go route. And off the snap, he's gone. <laughs> it's not fair. It's actually not fair. Somehow doesn't have the speed to take it to the end zone, but Marquise gets us 57 yards on the first play of the drive. And unless we have some sort of turnover, I think we can pretty much coast the rest of this drive and get points no matter what. We're running it potentially into some pressure here. See what CJ Beasley can do. Blocking, kicks him out to the edge. And CJ's going to get a good pickup. Eight yards brings us inside the 10 and a second and two. Going to keep this running game alive for now. And off again up the middle blocking. There enough. What a spot. They give us three yards in the first and goal. I thought he was held behind for sure. The refs, however, disagree. Feeling rather generous towards us. And now we will hand it off once more from the two-yard line. And C.J. Beasley into the end zone. Gets the two yards, and we extend the lead now to 14 points. The offense is cruising in this one. Well, what can we do again on defense? If we can hold them and get the ball back before the end of the half, this game could really turn into a blowout quickly. They do return that kick, and it's a decent return. With only 4.20 left in the half, I'm curious to see how aggressive they get. Will they start to pass a little bit more? This one on first down is going to be a run, and the hole up the middle is uh, astronomically large, and they get 13 yards, no problem there. Just as felt to me like uh, we need to be bringing pressure. The, when they run the ball, they've run it so well. That time a draw is going to lose them a yard. Again, because we brought the pressure. I think we're going to just continue to bring it as well. Second and 11, trying to bring Phillips in. And, oh, I switched off him. Quarterback's looking to scramble. He's got a lot of room. He's already fumbled the ball. No, his running back fumbled the ball once. We tried to get him to fumble there, but Luca, strong hands, hold on to it, and gets to midfield on the 17-yard scramble. Uh, we rushed five and couldn't do anything to contain him as he just went up the middle on us. So what can we do again? 
Russian five. First and ten. Looks like it's going to be a run. And there he is. Kale Mackey getting this tackle for loss. Another loss of two. His third tackle for loss of the game already. All righty. Can we get the stop here? Another run out towards the edge. Smith's there to pull him down at the line of scrimmage. It's third and 12. And this is the chance for the defense to get off the field. Kind of hoping the rain causes some problems. As the throw is going to come. And over the middle. We get the pass breakup. I was a little bit worried about getting called for a pass interference. But Don Riley gets that one broken up. And they're going to punt this ball away. Obviously, we know that's good news because Marquis could return this, but it's probably just going to be into the end zone. As yeah, it's a it's a deep kick landing, pretty much in yeah at the goal line, bounces out of the back. We'll take the touchback. So 2:36 to work with. I'm not at all worried about the amount of clock left, especially with all our timeouts. So uh, if we need to, we can run the ball. Although it's not going to work if we just get hit at the line of scrimmage. Maybe could have cut up field a little bit sooner, but. Getting stopped on that one. On this second down, stepping back to pass. Got to throw the safe one. Finds Brayden Bennett. Juke won't work, but he gets the first down. Oh, if he would have burned that man, I think he would have been gone. Still fine with it. Make sure that this drive continues to move as seamlessly as possible. We'll play action. And, oh, the pressure's coming real quick. Trying to get out of there, just throwing it away. Uh, wouldn't be surprised. No, no call for an intentional grounding. Definitely can't complain that we don't lose yards on the play. Second and 10, stepping back to throw. I think we should have a wide open Tyson Mobley, and he does hold on through the contact. That gives us another first down to work with. Radon not perfect on his passing so far today, but pretty dang good as we're going to make it maybe a risky one. Marquis somehow came down with that. Oh, I thought it was an interception when I threw it, but that works out. Again, another first down. Three receptions on the day so far with four marquees and over 100 yards as well. Stepping back again to throw and oh, I'm scared. I'm getting rid of it. I think we had guys open, but I just, I got scared. I panicked. Just use that to stop the clock and set up for another down. I'm kind of looking at Malcolm Williams as no, we're just going to scramble. Radon's got a lot of space in front. Oh, the diving tackle is very good. We're going to go hurry up on this third and four. I thought that was at least a 20-yard pickup, but good play from the linebacker to stop it. On third down, a minute left in the half. Again, outside the pocket. We'll dump it off, give it to Malcolm Williams this time. And he's got us just outside the 20-yard line for a first down. They're pressed up on Marquise again. When they press up, we're sending him deep. Because it's not going to take a whole lot for him to burn his man. As this is a tough throw. Chad Bradshaw gets into the end zone. Oh, just extended his route. And Radon able to get the ball there before the defense can get there. And we'll extend the lead. 21 points up with only 53 seconds left in the half. If we can continue this kind of performance into the third and fourth quarters... This is exactly the kind of bounce back win that you want after a rough overtime loss. Uh, setting ourselves up very nicely for the second half right now. I think they're going to be passing a lot on this drive. This is super risky. We're going with the safety blitz. It has to get there quickly. Oh, no, it didn't. Quarterback scrambling, though. I got very lucky on that one. It is trying to strip the ball. They can't get it. This is a sack for a loss of a yard. I think I'm going to put us back into the 3-3-5 for the rest of this drive. Try to prevent some stuff. We know that the passes are coming. We'll see, actually. They might just let the clock kind of run out on this one. Um, could be one where we could jump the snap as they seem to be letting it burn down. And they do jump the snap. It's a slip screen. Quarterback's going to take off. I've never seen the quarterback scramble on a slip, slip, uh, slip screen, but it works for him. Oh, he uh, As he scrambled, he scrambled in my brain and prevented me from talking but we just prevent them from scoring maybe uh a safe idea from duke but it doesn't work at the end because they get nothing out of that drive when they could have been pushing for yards and now we get to go into the locker room up 28 to 7 getting the ball to start the third quarter and i don't really have many criticisms we could do a little bit better job stopping the run but when they're successful on the run it's because we're selling out to stop the pass so all in all a good first half we just got to finish it up in the second Unfortunately, the start of the half means that Duke has to kick off to Marquise. 
He's already got a punt return for a touchdown in this game. And oh, I ran right in the blocker. I think that might have been the touchdown as well. If not, it was going to be a lot of yards. Instead, we're starting with not the best field position. Inside the 25 on this one. Uh, no deep safeties, but we'll run it on first down. Try to draw them in even more. And especially if we can pick up five yards on the ground, that's definitely worth it. Gonna try the counter on second and five. Blocking, not the best, but some space opens up and Braden Bennett breaks a couple of tackles and gets us the first down. That was just some hard running there. Not Braden's first yards of the game, but his first carry. And he's gonna get us a lot there. But we're going to bring him out. CJ Beasley on this counter. The back-to-back -back counters working out. More yards there. Four more on the ground. Let's try the play action on this one. Second and six. Looking maybe for Marquise to get wide open. Outside the pocket. Waiting, waiting. Throwing Marquise. Completely unguarded. They were able to get there right after the ball. But that's a free 29 yards for us as far as I'm concerned. I don't even think the play action got him. Maybe just being on the other side of the field is we'll try this read option. Radon keeping it, getting some blocking, and Radon finds the edge. Can he get one more block? No. Oh, is that Logan Malden or something out there? Malcolm Williams, I think, actually. Just turn around, put a body on the safety, and it's a touchdown. Happy to have the first and goal. Would have been a little bit more happy if the offense was off the field at this point. Uh, we'll hand it off up the middle. CJ Beasley, that's an easy, easy four-yard touchdown run for him. Offensive line got a good push, and now it's 35-7. to seven. It might be time for us to start calling this one a blowout. Uh, <laughs> almost an insurmountable lead for a team that's only scored seven uh, to this point. So, see what the defense can do. Maybe a couple more sacks, maybe an interception. Might still see some running out of this team, but I'm going to expect passes as they're going to be feeling a little bit more time pressured. Not necessarily sure my play calling will be the best, but we're going to stick with it anyways as bringing a little bit of pressure. Quarterback, man, he likes to scramble up the middle. It doesn't work that time. It's our third sack of the game, maybe our fourth sack as uh, he loses a couple yards. Kale Mackey got in there. Well, can we get the stop on third down? They're going to step back, looking to throw. Man, wide open. Kale Mackey got absolutely dusted on the corner route. We give up 29 yards. Uh, yeah, that's likely to happen if Kale's covering a guy like that. Definitely not the best that we have in coverage on the team. Trying to bring a little bit of a blitz on this first down. They're going to motion. And it looks like they were going to go with the screen, but the quarterback throws it away immediately. So just a quick stop on that first down. A lot of the plays where we dial up the pressure, it really seems to work for us, but I just don't want to take the risk of doing it too often. Apparently, usering user a D lineman. Quarterback scrambling. Durham Finch can't get there. Nobody else responds in time, so they get a free first down. Oh, that's so frustrating. We might be winning this game pretty handily, but if you're not covering somebody currently and the quarterback's scrambling straight at you, you got to go up and pop him. Uh, again, pressure. Manny Stokes tried to dive to get in front of it. Should have stayed on his feet to get the tackle, and it's a touchdown. Oh, I should have never been in that position. Safety blitz can't get to the quarterback in time. Manny, honestly, a little bit disappointing with his coverage recently. So it's 35-14 uh, now. Can't hold them to single digits. A little bit disappointing, but we just have to continue to answer. Maybe, just maybe, Marquise will do it right away. Number 55, the only one giving chase at this point. And I can let go of the sprint button because Marquise is beyond gone. A big drought in the middle of the season there without any sort of return touchdowns. And he's got two today. Uh, we answer right back. And now the defense gets another chance to come back out onto the field. Not, uh, not a bad way to respond. Still wish that we wouldn't have given up the points, though. Let's see if we can hold them again on this drive. So they take another touchback. And uh, yeah, look at Diamant. We just got to stop him from getting those completions. We're not necessarily giving up a substantial amount of yards, but he is constantly finding his guys, and there he does it again as he's beating Leon there. Our man coverage just isn't seeming like it's working right now. First and ten. Uh, we'll go into the 3-3-5 and see what's going on there. Leon gets beat over the top. Man, lucky that that man went out of bounds because either... 
uh, defender there able to get the tackle, and it's another big reception. They've kind of figured it out, it seems, the Blue Devils have. Uh, moving the ball pretty well in the past couple of drives. Uh, quarterback getting pressured. He's going to scramble, and there's another sack. Thank goodness. That's the problem is that some of the time when we get the, the coverage locked down, he's able to just scramble away from it, but not that time. On this second and 12, it's going to be another slip screen. Manny was there. Just kind of got picked up on the block, so it's up to Kale Mackey. He gets the big hit, thankfully, so now it's a third and 11 for these guys. Question is going to have to be, will we be able to get the stop? I'm going to use our Manny on this play. Try to see if that helps us at all. Quarterback maybe has somebody open looking for Jenkins. That's just bad user on my part. I should let the AI get him in position. It's probably at least a deflection. Instead, I thought maybe I could get up there and ball hawk it, and that was a mistake. No one to blame on, on that play but myself as they get a first and goal. Very disappointing on the play. First and goal, I'm bringing a big blitz. I don't want them running up the middle, but... Oh! I didn't think I was going to have a chance until somehow John Taylor just grabs a hold of him and brought him down at the line of scrimmage. Well, let's keep the pressure up, I guess. See what we can do. Second and goal. Man in motion is a little bit worrisome for me. And it's going to be handed off. Aaron Jenkins gets there immediately. They got two yards. They're at the goal line, but it is third down. Definitely worried about giving this one up, but we're going to do our best on third and goal. The goal line in, and well, uh, maybe we don't have to go for a goal line stand because we get bailed out. Second false start by this line in the game. Instead of being inches away, they're about six yards now. Question is, can we get the stop? The coverage needs to hold. They're going with another slip screen. I can't get anybody over there. He cuts it back inside, and he falls in. The tackling not there, the blocking just good enough, and Duke scores again, which is so incredibly frustrating as Diamant uh, sets a school passing touchdown career record uh, up at 68. The only positive on uh, the other team scoring is that it allows Marquise to get another chance to return. The question is, always going to be where's the blocking, and how good is it? And it was incredible until uh, Charles Hart decided not to pick up the final guy that needed to be picked up which is a bit of a shame, but again, good field position for us to start the drive. Not up uh, as many scores as I would hope, but with the 29 seconds left in the third quarter, if we can just get this into the fourth and uh, get it over with, I'll definitely be happy with it. Just going to run one final play in this third quarter, a counter to Brayden Bennett. The last one went for nine yards. This one... Maybe going for a lot more. The blocking out on the edge is phenomenal. And Brayden Bennett picks up a final block. And as the third quarter comes to a close, so does this drive as Brayden Bennett takes it 54 yards to the house. The blocking was incredible. That move to get the safety just a little bit out of position is enough. And how about that final block on the edge just to get a hand on the guy? We're going to go into the fourth quarter up 49 to 21. Just uh, a phenomenal big play. Uh, can't complain about that. Heading into the fourth again, the defense just needs to do a little bit better to get the stops on third downs, but uh, I can't complain being up as much as we are. A 28-point lead as we open up this final quarter of play. And I'm going to expect, yeah, no, not, not another touchback. Uh, they're going to try to return it, and that's definitely a mistake. They only get basically to the 20-yard line. All right, well, what can the defense do this time? We're running to the man, which is probably a mistake, and oh! I was there for the all-user pick, but we just can't hold on. It's so rare that we get a chance at an interception, especially when I, my user's involved. It doesn't work out that time, unfortunately. The quarterback's going to scramble. We get a big hit on him, but uh, he got six yards for his efforts. Still going to cover exactly the same way here on third down. This looks like a screen. It is. Charles Hart gets the tackle. It's fourth and one, and unless Duke has plans of winning this game, they will punt it away, which it seems like they obviously will. I don't expect a fake here. I do expect Marquise to have a chance to take another one to the house. The special teams has been phenomenal so far in this game. Just a couple of blocks is really all we need as, uh, again, we had blocks, but I ran into a, uh, a blocker, so just kind of lost out on a chance. I think at this point, with five minutes left in the game, there's no reason for us to get fancy or risk turning the ball over and giving them a little bit of hope, so we'll just run the ball and burn the clock here. 
In fact, we're gonna try to do both of those things with the second string in. Uh, let Raid on rest. It's his first game back from injury. He did his job. No reason to risk getting him injured again as we will just hand it off to Bennett on second down. And we've got a third down and we're gonna continue to run the ball. The read option, it's gonna be handed off, which is best case scenario for us because Braden has the speed to take it far enough to get the first down. And that's exactly what he does. So in clock burn mode now, with less than four minutes to play, it's time to just continue to get the handoffs. I actually might need to check to see if going for 100 rushing or 250 is passing is still necessary. Uh, we only have like 210 passing yards, so we need 40 more. Thank goodness I checked. Uh, Radon and the rest of the first team is still in. And... We're going to throw one up for Marquise. Can we get all of the yards that we need? Oh, he was open. He got the catch, but he couldn't stay in bounds. Third and two. Maybe a chance still to pick it up. I'm sending Marquise deep again. We'll see what the safety does because this could be a, an easy pickup. I have to throw it. We can't gain yards any other way, so we'll throw it to Malcolm Williams. Setback cheese works for a couple more. We get 25 yards of the about 40 that we needed. I would say in pretty much every situation, it's definitely worthwhile to try and get these yards for the recruiting game. As again, stepping back to pass, throwing the timing route, we find Logan Malden and he's gonna score. So there's 250 through the air and another touchdown. Uh, and now we can bring in the second string. We don't do this often, but now I've brought in both the uh, second string offense and defense. Typically we keep our first string defense in, but uh, let's give some uh, some bench players a chance to get a few reps in, especially if they might be playing for us next season. We want to try to keep as many of the uh, bench players happy as possible so we don't risk a bunch of transfers. And with 2.34 to go, let's see a run on first down. And look at that, a tackle at the line of scrimmage. David Wilson, who I imagine might be Sidney McRae's replacement for next season, got the beautiful tackle. This time, uh-oh, running it towards the edge. It's going to be uh, Brooks who gets the tackle. We do give up 25 yards. Realistically, this is bad for defensive ratings, but again, trying to get reps for the younger guys. It's a little bit interesting to me that they are still trying to run as much as they are. This is another handoff. Maybe this is their, them just waving the white flag, not passing the ball, just going for all runs. Regardless, we will just continue to try to get these stops. Second down, another handoff. And a nice tackle from behind from Johnson Jr. It's third and 11. With a minute and 20 to play, I'm curious if on this third down they go to the air. I'm a little bit worried about our coverage here. We're in the zone. There's going to be somebody open. Quarterback maybe getting hit as he throws. Just puts that one into the turf a couple yards short of the receiver. So it's going to be the punt team that comes out. And Charles Hart back to get the return on this one. No need to risk Marquise. He's got the award sealed up. Uh, everything else looking good. Charles has returned kicks for touchdowns so far this season. And he's looking incredible on this one. Weaving in and out of the defense. Gets 33 yards there. Well, how about that? All right. Just two more plays. We'll have Williams hand it off to Braden Bennett up the middle. And then we'll go ahead and come out in the victory formation and take Anita and this one. So, 56-21. We're going to bounce back from the brutal overtime loss with our players now healthy. And uh, that was a pretty solid win. 56-21 just uh, didn't seem like we really were in danger the whole time. Defense obviously could have held them to fewer points and fewer yards. Uh, but the offense played very, very well. Big plays all over the place. Uh, I think, especially with how many people we had visiting, I think a lot of those visits went very, very well for us today. Oh, wow. Number two, USF lost to Houston in a close one, 44 to 40. Uh, that's good news for us. It's kind of sad for the Bulls, but it is what it is. 56-21 again, our final score. Uh, we outgained them on both sides of the ball. We gave up more yards than we should have, uh, even on the turnover battle. And somehow they actually came away with the time of possession. I guess that's what happens when you get those special teams touchdowns. 
But all in all, a pretty solid game for us. Marquise Jackson was our offensive player of the game. Four catches for 130 yards, two total touchdowns. Of course, the returns. And Kale Mackey, defensive player of the game, definitely deserving. Four tackles for loss, including a sack, and he had that forced fumble. Uh, unfortunately, on the forced fumble, Luca Diamant, the quarterback for Duke, picks it up and runs it to the house for a touchdown, but uh, it was a good play nonetheless. So up to 10 and 1. There's our double digit wins. We couldn't get it last week. We are able to get it done this week. And now we can advance towards week 13, our final game of the season on the road against North Carolina. Uh, that's before our back to back bye weeks and then the conference championship. I think that we probably got a couple of commits after this game. We had a ton of guys visiting. I hope that some of them decide that they're going to commit to us. Maybe that frees up some points for next week's recruiting. Uh, and we should move up at least one spot in the rankings as well. Ooh, there it is. Chris Douglas, the 81 overall mid linebacker commits. The 78 overall outside linebacker, Josh Bryant. Jesse Bowie at 76 on defensive tackle commits. We get another defensive tackle and a running back in Roy King. Uh, this class is starting to look pretty nasty. <laughs> ah, I love it. JJ Tyson had a good visit, 750 points for him and Alvis Payne. Uh, Caleb Peoples gets 750. Those are, that's just great news all around. Um, five four stars signed this week. <laughs> we move up to number four in the country. We will play against number or unranked six and four UNC. They're a B plus team, very similar to Duke. Uh, everything there looks pretty similar, except they maybe run the ball more than they pass it. But uh, definitely we should be favored to win that one as we're looking for win number 11. In the top 25 polls, we know that USF at number two lost their first game. Seems they've dropped down to number 12. Uh, Texas is able to beat Kansas in a pretty close one, 35 to 23. Um, so that's a top five team losing and maybe the reason why we jump up two positions. Uh, besides them and USF, Auburn at number eight loses to Georgia, which is bad news for us because we're fighting for recruits with Georgia uh, actively right now. Iowa lost to Cal, interestingly enough. Uh, and Arizona lost to UCLA. Ole Miss and USC both drop out of the rankings. And we do have a decent amount of ranked games. Miami and Notre Dame will play. LSU and Auburn will play. Uh, okay, may I say a decent amount. There's literally just two. How about the BCS polls? We're sitting in fourth there as well. So even if we were just doing a four-team playoff, we wouldn't have to worry too much about that, which is good news. Um, Heisman Watch, we didn't have anybody on last week. Radon finally fell off. Marquise hasn't been there for a while. And again, we still don't have anybody up there. Kind of disappointing right now. Tyree Edwards, the quarterback for Michigan. Only 91 overall and only a junior is leading everybody at the moment. Uh, bowl projections. I guess these don't matter a whole lot, but I'm curious if we weren't playing the playoff, who they would have us up against. They'd say Auburn in the Orange Bowl. There's a chance that that could still happen. I don't, I don't know exactly how, but things get weird sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be it for this episode, though. I'm excited to be getting near the end of the season. I think that this could be uh, a chance where we at least make the national championship game, if not win it outright, if we continue to play well. But we've shown that we can hang with 99 overall teams. Uh, I mean, we did it last week with our starting quarterback out injured. So uh, definitely, definitely feeling good about it. We do have to beat North Carolina and then win the ACC conference championship to make it to the playoffs first. So we're not quite there yet, but we're definitely getting close. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like button. It legitimately helps these videos get seen by so many more people. So uh, if you want to show some love to the channel, please feel free to do that. Uh, and if you're not already subscribed and you want to be notified when these videos come out, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. And while you are down there doing that, uh, head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster as well as links to my Twitter and our community Discord. Uh, and as always, there's going to be a link to the College Football Revamp mod as well if you're trying to get that for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.